here's how to make this really cool wiggly text effect in PowerPoint, which by the way can add some authenticity or vulnerability and even sometimes a casual tone to your presentations. And that's what I really like to use it for. The first step is to create and copy the text that you want to be wiggly. So what you want to do here is to individually insert your letters. So you want to make sure that each one of the letters is separate here. And that's because the effect is especially effective when each one of these can be manipulated and animated separately. So the font, by the way, that I'm using is one called Cardenio Modern, which is a free font and is one that I frequently use in my presentations. I find that fonts that are handwritten look particularly good with this trick. Although you can use big blocky letters too, which is what I did for the beginning of the presentation. And one tip here is you can make your first letter and then um, just paste it multiple times to get the other ones. Or you can take it and then hit control plus D to duplicate it for your other letters. Let's undo that. And there you go, we have our word inserted. So we have the letters individually here, and now we just select them and then hit Control G to group them. And this will form your first layer. And the tip here is if you have more than one word, then group everything together. So when I had the words wiggly text, in the intro video, I grouped both the wiggly and the text together. You want everything in one gigantic group, even if you're doing something like a paragraph. But do make sure that the letters within each group are separated. Great, so once we're done with that, create two additional duplicate layers here. So essentially we take this initial text that we had and then we hit control D with that one two in order to create those additional layers so let me go back here and then what we're left with is three layers that all look the same and I've changed the colors here so that you can see better but of course it when you do this yourself you want them all to be the same color the other piece that will be really helpful to us is to rename each of these in the selection pane. So if you hit one of these here and then go to shape format, you can then access the selection pane here. And this allows you to see all of the different pieces, all of the different shapes and text boxes, etc., that are on your slide. And I've already renamed them here. So the back one here, the black one, I've called it layer one. So it was initially something like group one, but you can rename this to whatever you want. And then the other one is layer two here. This is the blue. And then layer three is the pink. You can see that here. So it'll be very helpful to us to be able to, to see the individual layers. To finish off this step, let's just put all of these layers on top of each other now. So we highlight all of them and then go to arrange, align, and then let's say center, and then arrange, align, and then middle. And now they're all on top of each other and we're ready to move on. And once you're done with that, you're ready for the next step, which is to shift each layer slightly so that it's off by just a tiny hair. To save time, I'll show you how I did it for the intro to this video. And here you have several options to make your layers different. So you can use small nudges, rotations, and size variations to make each letter just a tiny bit different than the one underneath. So let me zoom in here and show you what I mean. At this point, it's very, very useful to have your selection pane open so that you can see all the layers. You might notice on the selection pane that the text boxes are now actually freeform shapes. And the reason for that is that this animated file will actually be available to you in the video description. And because Cardenio Modern, the font that I used, is a non-standard font, I vectorized it so that it would translate across all versions to you. 
but the concept is exactly the same. So let me show you what I did here. The key here is that you can actually hide each one of your layers so that you can work with one at a time. So let's hide this top layer here so that we can just see the blue and the black. Now what I did here is if you click on each individual letter, so it used to be kind of like this, it was exactly in line with the black. So this is how it was. And then what I did here, I'm just going to hit uh, control Z a few times to undo is that I rotated and I shifted or nudged the text just a little bit in order to get this very, very slight variation in layer two. And let's just open up the shape format menu to see how much I shifted the rotation. So if we go here, you see that the rotation is 358 degrees. So I shifted it two degrees back from 360. So just two degrees difference from the original. And I would not recommend going beyond two degrees because we don't want to make it too different. The key here is subtlety. So, as, so if you could make it just a tiny, tiny bit off, that's what's going to get you that, that really natural and cool looking effect. And the way to nudge or shift the shape very slightly is to hold down control and then use your arrow key. So here I'm holding down control and I'm going to hit the left arrow key. So as you can see, it's a very, very, very slight shift that you can do. And that's what you need here. And as you can see, I kind of did the same thing on the other ones, on the other letters as well. I just shifted them, rotated them slightly, etc. You can also do a very slight size increase if you want. So if I hit this X, I didn't do it here, but if I want, I can go to here and then I can lock the aspect ratio. And then if I increase the size just by a tiny, tiny bit, that's probably too much actually. Like if I go to 1.95 here, just that tiny, tiny difference there uh, can, can really make it look great. And then what you can do is also just kind of shift it to be as close as possible um, to the center here so that it doesn't look completely off. And then you can do the same thing for layer three. So if you open that up, um, you can also take these pieces and shift them around just a tiny, tiny bit so that they're, they're different than both layer two and layer one. And you can see the differences in the colors here. What you never want to do is have a gap kind of like this between the letters because that's going to make it look really, really weird. Okay, so let's zoom out here. And now we can get to our next step, which is to animate. So the first part of this step is that we add appear animations to the second and third layers here. So the first part of this step is to add appear animations to the second and third layers. So the blue and the pink here. And the layers I've separated kind of for demo purposes, just so that you can see what they look like. But I do not recommend actually splitting them out like this once you have them on top of each other. So I would stick to using the selection pane, as I showed you earlier, to kind of turn on and turn off the layers so that, that you can work with them. So let's go ahead and add these two on here. So first we select these two layers. Then we go to the animations tab and then we choose the appear animations. Then we go to the animation pane and then let's make them start with previous and we'll adjust this after we're done with all the animations. For now, that's what we want to get to. Once we're done with that, we are ready for the next piece here, which is adding blink animations, then staggered timing delays to each layer. So we have our three layers that I showed you earlier. The second and third one have the appear animation, as you might remember. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add blink animations of 0.6 seconds that are repeating to all three of these. 
Here's what the animation pane looks like. These two have appear animations that are starting with previous. Now what we'll do is we'll highlight all of these and then we'll go to add animation and then more emphasis effects and then choose blink here. And this is where the real magic of this trick comes in. Then go to the effect options and then as I mentioned earlier, go to timing and then make it 0.6 seconds in duration and then make it repeat until the end of the slide. And then also make those start with previous here. Great, so this is what your animation pane should look like right now. Next, what we want to do is add the staggered timing delays. And I've developed these through a lot of trial and error. So if you can come up with better ones, let me know. But the idea is when one layer disappears to have the other layers come in so that they're always kind of blinking on and off. So here's what the delays are. For layer one, it's just zero seconds. So it's just starting with previous. Layer two is delayed by 0.3 seconds, and layer three is delayed by 0.45 seconds. So let's see what that looks like. So this is your layer one. So let's put that at the top of the animation pane, and it's, gonna, it's not gonna have any delay at all. Next, we're gonna have this second uh, layer. It's going to have a 0.3 second delay here. And then finally, let's drag this layer three up here, and that's gonna have a 0.45 second delay. And just to finalize, drag this layer two uh, appear animation so that it's right in line with the layer two blink animation. Doesn't matter that much, but it's just gonna make it make for a smoother effect. And then layer three, just kind of reiterate that it's with previous, so just make it with previous again. And you see that it's shifted right here to be exactly in line um, with layer three. And that is basically it. So let's put these all together. So I'm gonna put them on top of each other. And there you go, that's how you do this effect. Definitely try this out in your presentations. And I'd really recommend using this on a title slide for part of your title because it'll really attract attention and make your presentation stand out. Plus, this is a looping animation, so it's perfect for when your audience is just looking at that title slide waiting for you to begin. So thanks a lot for watching once again, and see you for my next tutorial.